Hey, Charlotte. Hey, Tiffany. Have you started working on your fellowship application? I really need to. I'm trying to get a head start, but to be honest, I don't even know where to begin. I just wish I had a better idea about what makes a strong application. Yeah. Oh, there's Lamar. Hey, Lamar. Hey, Lamar. Hey, Charlotte and Tiffany. We were wondering if you could give us some tips on the graduate research fellowship application. We were wondering if you could help us. Sure. I know at this time it seems like a daunting process, but you guys are really doing the right thing by starting so early. This will give you time to get feedback from your advisors, to edit your statements, and also to register and upload your work to the fast learning system so you'll have some time to get used to it. When you're talking about your leadership, it's really important to show that you're a self-starter. It's important to show that you have an ability to actively participate in your research and with greater society because that's going to show your broader impact strengths. Speaking of broader impact strengths, have you learned of the NSF definition? Okay, well, it's important that you guys look that up because that's going to really help you when you're writing your statements. Check the program solicitation, the NSF proposal guide, and other resources such as a GRFP website to get more details about broader impacts. They want to know how your research will benefit society. Also, talk about what activities you have participated in to share science with the public, such as tutoring K-12 students, helping with science fairs, volunteering at museums, and increasing participation of underrepresented groups in STEM fields. If you haven't done any of those sort of activities, show how you plan to engage in broader impacts activities in the future. There's no one right answer, but it's important to address broader impacts in both your statements. Now, when you're talking about your interaction in the community, make sure you don't talk about it like a checkbox. You don't want to be generic in your response at all. You want to be very specific. So, for example, if I was mentioning tutoring students, what I would do is tie in my training and my graduate work and how that helped me build a foundation to mentor and train the student. Also, when you're writing your statements, it's really important to be clear and have a vision of the future. Don't worry so much about sounding smart. You want to focus more on weaving together your personal story with your past, present, and future with your research goals. This way it'll show a very well-rounded story and it'll make a compelling case for yourself. Because really, at the end of the day, it's more about you than your proposed science. Thanks, that's really helpful. But what do you think about our reference letters? Yeah, well, you don't have much control over what reference writers write. While you can't control what they write, you can provide them with information, and you can even offer them suggestions. Um, speaking of references, it might be very helpful if we can video chat with Dr. Hollis. He's actually the advisor who wrote my recommendation when I won the fellowship. Okay. Hey, Dr. Hollis. Hi, Tiffany. Hi, Lamar. Hi, Charlotte. Thanks for including me in this video chat. Thanks for assisting us. What should we ask our references to keep in mind when providing a letter on our behalf? Well, you have to remember that we're very busy. And so uh, it's important that you provide us uh, with materials early. Um, things that you should include are uh, resume, um, previous research, and uh, documents that you plan to submit with your proposal ask reference writers who, who know you, know you as a student, and they can write to why you want to do this research project. Um, having somebody who you think might have a lot of name recognition isn't necessarily the best uh, reference for you for this uh, particular grant. Should we have a time frame in mind when asking? Uh, yes, and remember to ask us early. Uh, we are often very busy. Uh, we get a lot of requests for letters. So the earlier you can ask us, the better. Uh, you might want to move the deadline for when you need the letter from us up uh, so that you have enough time to pull together your application. But you only need three letters of recommendation. Um, the reason being that sometimes something happens and maybe you can't get a letter um, of reference from someone. Um, and it would be terrible that you could possibly be excluded by not having enough letters of reference. And so that's why there are the five slots. You should use all five. Any other tips we should keep in mind? One thing that you should remind us is that this is not a traditional National Science Foundation institutional grant, and that um, what you want us to do is you want us to uh, highlight who you are and um, the, uh, your ability to succeed as a graduate student and your ability to succeed in doing research, uh, more so than the merits of the actual research that you're doing. Uh, but talking about reviewers, I think that you should conference in Dr. Patton, she's a fellow professor um, and a colleague who served as a reviewer in the past. Hi, Dr. Patton. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to Lamar, who you know, um, and Charlotte and Tiffany. They're looking to apply to the NSF Graduate Fellowship. 
and uh, would like to know what you think reviewers are looking for. Hi, Tiffany and Charlotte, and thanks, John. As reviewers, it is important for us to know that this is your application and not something a professor is pushing you to pursue. As it's been said before, this program is about funding people, not an individual project. And so make sure that your application is coming across in your own voice. Let us know that you are truly interested in graduate education. And while the fellowship can assist in your studies and career, this fellowship shouldn't be the sole reason that you're actually going to graduate school. What if I haven't decided if I want to go to graduate school? Let us know that you're interested in graduate education. If you're not interested in graduate education, this probably isn't the best program because we want for you to be able to pursue your dreams and your aspirations even if you don't get this fellowship. But it's something that is going to shine through with your application for us to know that you're actually really motivated and inspired to do this type of work. Read the directions carefully and don't try to exceed the limits. When we see work that has tried to bend the rules to meet acceptability, a lot of times it has a backfire effect and you actually end up not meeting the basic eligibility requirements for your application to be reviewed. Have fun with your application. When an application is exciting to read, we can feel that coming through the pages as we're reviewing your application. And that's something that makes it easy and more compelling for us to review your application if we know that you're excited about what you want to do as well. What are some other ways to show broader impacts? We love seeing innovative ideas and activities, overseas study, organizing in a community, being a self-starter and working with students with special needs. Those are the types of things that we actually do pay attention and love for a broader impact. Lastly, it is important for you to understand what the NSF is looking for. If you're academically talented but don't actually care much for the broader impacts of your work, then maybe a different fellowship might be more suitable for you. Well, this has been really helpful. Thanks, Lamar, Dr. Hollis, Dr. Patton. I think we're ready to start the application process.